Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. And uh, we're waiting for Kevin Kimball to arrive. Um, a couple of years we've been off the Lockheed Vega project, but everybody's time and efforts have kind of like uh, gotten to where we're all on the same page and we're excited about getting the project going again. There are only four original wooden fuselage Lockheed Vegas in existence. The other three are national museums. This is the only one that will ever fly. And uh, we're sending it off to be restored right now. Uh, here's the fuselage over here. And uh, it's going to go up about an hour away uh, to Mount Dora. A gentleman by the name of Kevin Kimball is going to restore the airplane. Kevin is the gentleman that actually built my GBZ reproduction. Did a beautiful job, so I know he's going to do a great job with this. Yeah, so yeah, it's exciting getting going back to the um, project. I know, uh, I think some of the stuff you're looking for maybe is across the street. Okay. Ken and Paul are going to uh, uh, help with that. Um, All right. I thought maybe what we could do would be, before we go hook up with them, let's just go glance real quick at kind of what we've done so far, you know, up at the wings sure. and all that. Sure. Kind of head up there and take stock of what we've done. So this is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a major milestone to get this thing done, you know, and the, did a great job. Um, and so the fuel tanks are in it. I know you made new fuel tanks because right. they had some, they used to use this for like radar or something and they made fiberglass yeah. ones? Or? Right, in the 50s they had fiberglass tanks or late 40s when then the GE did that. Huh. So, um, you know, they were in bad shape. So yeah. Just yeah. Go back well, to the original. Yeah. Exactly. So you have the drawings. One had right. made brand new right. fuel tanks. So, so the wing basically. This is basically done. It just needs fabric. Right. Um, and uh, we've got uh, tail feathers are the same way. Tail feathers. Right. And most of this, I mean, it's new skins on all this, but it was all the original structure. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at. Original 1929, right here with a new skin. Yeah, top. which is great. Now, what's the like on the fuselage? That that's just this is this is just skin over wooden structure. But on the fuselage, it's basically like laminations or we. It's it's a it's a plywood skin, but it's made in a three dimensional shape. The shape right. of the fuselage, so you can't take pre-existing sheet it. ply and roll it. It's not a tube. Right. So it's it's compound curve shape. So we actually have to make multiple little strips and make the first layer of skin, the second layer of skin, and the oh, third layer in the shape of okay. half of the fuselage. So you're not having to take complete sections and mold them like you would like on a, a hydroform, like a piece of aluminum right. or something. Right. Okay. So, so it's a lots of strips. Right. And it's three layers. Correct. And it's probably 45 or 90 or... 90s. So you have one layer that's lengthwise right. on the bottom, then 90 degrees to that like okay. arcs. Yeah. And then another lengthwise. Okay. So there's about, around the fuselage, there's about 30 strips lengthwise. Huh. About seven or eight per quarter. Right. It just depends on the width of the wood that we end up using. And then there's, oh, 30 or 40 strips that do hmm. the, the arcs in the mid layer. And one layer is one millimeter thick, then the middle layer is two, two millimeters thick, and the outside layer is one millimeter thick. Okay, so there's kind of a core, a two millimeter exactly. core. Right. And so... And it's all spruce. Okay, so when you're saying millimeters, I mean, this would have been an American airplane back then. Were they using millimeter plywood? Well, the dimensions on the drawing say 0.039 inches and 0.078, and when you convert that over, it's one millimeter. And two oh, I'll be darned. Interesting. So even, you know, Gerald Volte, who designed the fuselage, he was working in, in metric but didn't write it down that way. I'll be darned. He just so, put it in thousands of an inch right. or whatever. Right. So, so when you actually, do, so are we doing, is it like, I think on the Mosquito, weren't they doing this? Because the Mosquito was the only thing I was familiar with. And that was sure. actually like a layer, then a, it was like a, a piece of uh, like plywood, then a balsa wood core, mm. then a layer. So that's basically a completely different type of construction. It's it's similar in, in that it's three ply, but we're going to, this airplane is birch on all three plies. It doesn't have a balsa core. Right, okay. So it uses so, a birch core. Okay, it uses birch, and that's readily available. We, right. can, we can buy that. We, and you just cut that. it into strips. Have so, it cut into veneer strips that are that thick, what we want. 
Right. And then, so when you actually start laying it out, because, I mean, I assume you don't do one layer, then another layer. You kind of kind of somehow, how do you control all that? And then all of a sudden go, is it, is, are you making it over a male mold or inside of a female mold? In the factory originally, what they did in 1927 to 32-ish, whenever they were building these things, they actually had a male plug right. that they fitted the strips on to, right. get, to get all the little pieces to, to edge butt all around. And then they took that and put that in a female concrete mold, like I've hammered out wheel pants in the past. Right, right. So they put it in a female concrete mold, all three layers with the glue, and then had this giant rubber bladder, and they put about 20 pounds of shop air on it. Oh, okay, now that I can understand, but what That's I don't understand do. is you got these strips of wood, you're trying to lay one in there, when you go to get the next one, the other one bent, how do you get them all lined up? They, they put it together with veneering tape ahead of time. So veneering tape is something used in the cabinet industry, what, like on here where we can see the, the different pieces are yes. butted together. Right, the veneer right, right. tape would hold that temporarily and it's a sacrificial tape. So you hold it all together and you've got this is compound. It paper it's or paper? Paper, okay. Yeah, and it kind of glue, the glue, it yields to the glue. Uh, so they, that's what they did. They used the veneer tape to hold it together. So then they had this, you and I would each be on one end and right. have this long, this noodle and get it over there and get it in the mold. Right. And then they would Somebody take would come and tape it. Right, and, and then, then they then they would smear the glue in there, and then so lay the they'd, next one in. They'd be all taped together on the buck, on the male, and then you take it and drop it in the female while it's all taped together as one piece, and then you take the second piece, the second layer is all taped together, the cross layer, and they had it on a they call a transfer ring, a big hoop, mm -hmm. and they take that and drop it in with glue in between, and then the third layer, and then they put the bag on it, the big rubber. Right, bag. right, and then press it all down right. there. Okay. Now the the danger in that was. There's about 150 tons of energy that are stacked up in there when you put that 20 PSI in there with that much area. Right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stay on the mail plug right. and vacuum bag it. So we take one atmosphere away, it's 15 PSI, so we'll vacuum bag it on the mail plug. When we say vacuum bag, you're actually going to suck it down or you're actually right. just going to put another? Yeah, so we'll put the, the three, two layers, set, say a couple of layers on yeah. with glue in between and then vacuum bag just like you do composites today and suck the wood, the two layers tight together to the plug and that'll, that'll bond it together. And it's darn. much safer because there's no right, energy. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, man, let's make sure we film all that Heck stuff yeah. when we do that. Yeah. That'd be, because I, I mean, I'm fascinated by it and I yeah. know, uh, you know, our viewers would be fascinated sure. by it. So that's awesome. So, uh, okay, so we got all the tail feathers. Mm -hmm. we, got, we got the wing done. Um, and I guess at this point, we're not really focusing on I mean, we had the wrong engine on it, the wrong right. prop. You know, we've got one somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, when it, we get, start getting reasonably close, I'll start thinking about, you know, pulling an engine out and having it done. Right. Uh, which the other one was way too heavy. It was like a T6. It was. Uh, 1340. Right. And what we need is the early 1340, like I've got on the Ford Tri-Motor and Correct. stuff, you know, so. Yeah, this airplane, in, I th it was... 70 cal, 70 pounds of lead in the tail, something like that. Yeah, it was because it the engine was too heavy. Right, right. Yeah, okay. So, we'll so the whole the airplane's going to get lighter and be happier. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go down. Let's, so we'll go grab Ken and Paul okay. and uh, see if we can find out what else you're looking for. Okay, kind of just notice we've boxed all of that stuff up. Hey, hey, is Paul around? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, super. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin's here and Good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay, good. Paul? How you doing? Good, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, it's tough. It's only 94 it's degrees in here. Congratulations on Thank the uh, AMP. Yeah, yeah. Cal just got his AMP last week. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another one sucked into the yeah, 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 into the vortex. Really. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Well, super. Um. So basically, I think he just wants to look at some boxes of things that he needs yeah. for the fuselage yeah. and, um, you know, whatever he takes, he'll bring back or whatever, you know, with the rubber thing or we'll haul everything over there and you're going to need it there anyway. Right. Yeah, eventually it's all going to end up there as we go together and then, and then bring it all back to here, here once it's down to just a few pieces. Yeah. You know, big major pieces. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so just let us know when there's something interesting to film over there. Um, sure. You know, I'll let the, these guys go. Help, help you dig through stuff over there, you know, and okay. uh, suburban, and we'll go from there. Cool. Okay. Cool. Good seeing you. We'll go from there, but it's looking we're 
We're having fun. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, congratulations too. Thanks. Super. Yeah, well, just give me a call on the way out, and I'll see you up in the office. All right. Sounds cool. Good. Thanks. Okay, let me pull this suburban. Out. I got it in the shade. Okay. <laughs> Same sort of thing. I just, you got it with the of course, there's a lot I don't know. I don't know too much about air conditioning systems. Uh, that, or, that stuff is confusing. No, I, I, there's no reason really for everyone to learn how to weld and how to weld. Yep. He said, he gave me this little fake piece of wing and he said, What's that? And I said, A drain drum. He said, What's that? And I said, uh, This box, this box, this box. Those two over there. And those two so over there. Whatever you do, watch your head that you don't walk into that problem. And okay. there's one box over there too. All right. Yeah. I'll scatter it around. So this one, that one, those two, and those three plastic. Okay. Bins. Were you guys yeah. gonna take this oil tank? We will. Yeah. We, we can take it. that. The information I have is the actual airplane. Um, a, a majority of the drawings for the fuselage for the structure. And then other people's notes and measurements and what they did. All three are unique. <laughs> nothing, nothing. I mean, I mean, it's plus or minus an eighth of an inch here or there. But it's it's nothing. It's not like oh, here's the two out of three. Let's go with that. Yeah. It's we still have to just make a bit of a judgment call. Probably don't need the seats and that stuff here because we got to get something to put in the <laughs> Related old wood. Yeah. That was a question I was going to ask: Is can we have still a good bit of the old wood off the wing and some of the old wood that's come off the fuselage? Do we want to keep that? Does it mean anything? Do we want to keep it? Want to keep it. I would ask them, but I yeah, can't guarantee you. Yeah, so it was a great visit with uh, Kevin. Uh, everybody around here is very excited, including Kevin, of you know getting back on the Vega project. Uh, we've already had the wings and the tail feathers all done and stuff. The fuselage is going to be the most difficult thing, and it's going to be a pretty exciting project. And we're hoping to have uh, videos in the future to kind of show you out how it all happens. You know, I'm not quite sure how it's going to happen, so I'm going to be as excited as you guys to figure it out and see what Kevin does. <laughs>